so Gary, we're in the middle of the rotary now in the donut side of it or whatever. So um, could you explain, say what we're looking at here? Yeah, well, this work really, as I said, all the technology is um, we have our full high car free uh, milk meter, um, we have our pulsator, um, we have our valves from all of this unit here. The pulsator is very easy to work out. Um, off the screen, off the line. Two by two pulsation. Two by two pulsation. Again, waterproof direct diaphragms instead of a. Uh, it's direct plungers instead of diaphragm. Um, again, waterproof connections in it. You don't need any tools. Later. So whenever we unscrew the top off it. So say for instance, if someone did suck up something into the pulsation system, you can either wash it out directly through the hose with a bit of hot water, or you can come down here and, and split the pulsator. Again, very clean customer, no dirt in them. That's the only service items that's in our pulsator. Okay. And again, as you can see, very easy to do. Um, if customers want to service them, we'll allow them to, to service them themselves, and then we'll, we'll come and test it and draft it for your farm quality assurance with it. Yeah. So but Very, very easy to work out. And then, yeah. So as you said, the electronics are very safe inside here, they're very clean. Yeah. Uh, away from all the heavy moisture outside. Yeah, well that's that, that's the nice thing about doing a, a basement road tray is that you have uh, all the lines here, like really you only see a wee bit of dust on, there's no manure, there's no dirt, even on the door, everything's clean and tidy. Um, and they're at a good height too, I would say, just for servicing, you're not, you're not bending down. Yep, um, and again with, with that everything high level. Bottle here, could you explain that? Yeah, so this is the way the meters would sit normally with the bungs in them. Whenever you come to sample uh, once a month, sample, whenever it comes around with milk, you swap out the bottle, pour it in, and then put it back on again. One of the very unique things about Bomatic Rotaries is how we grip the drive wheels onto the, onto the Rotary. So you can see here we have twin, a twin system. So one gearbox runs one way, one runs the other, and we have a dedicated drive plate. So we have a lot wider drive plate than what most have because we don't drive on the I-beam. We okay. actually drive on an independent plate. What that does is it centers the gravity the cow so we're at this point is the heaviest point in the road tree mm. for driving yeah and then what we also have then is is this the airbag so what our airbag does is whenever during the day this is relaxed and there's no way there's no pressure on the gearboxes on the bearings right and whenever you go to start up this will actually pump up harder grip harder and then basically start the road tree will start off when it gets run up to its, its designated speed the airbag will reduce pressure Right, okay. That's something that's pretty unique to Womatic, I would say, is it? Very unique. They were the only ones, as far as I'm aware, that has this system for starting and stopping the rotary. Okay. Um, again, then you have your nylon rollers right round on a, on a cage system. So we actually, because our rotaries, our rollers are tapered till... So this, the roller that's on a 54 point will not go into the roller that's on a 50 point. They're actually tapered in, a, in the right curvature for the rotary. So if I take this roller out and roll it along the ground, it would roll in the diameter of the 54 stall. Right. What that does is that means we don't need any center and rollers. Everything, the center and rollers are done all through here. So ours is perfectly in a circle okay. right around it. Um, some of the other things you'll notice as well up here, all our lines running through the deck are all stainless steel. So our wash line, our milk line, our pulsation is all in stainless steel right through the deck. So there's no hoses hanging down anywhere to get caught with it. Um, and then what you see on the spokes here, a red tag. We talked about the ID on the, for the cow. These are the ID then for what stall. So this is how the smart dairy controller assigns what cow to what stall. So it knows the ID. Um, of the cow and then it knows the idea of where it is location on the deck. Yeah, okay. So I see no grease, no oil in, not needed. No, not needed. Okay. Dry. Okay. Dry. Yeah. Dry. Yeah, great. And say I'm just looking at the deck, the underneath of the deck then it, the concrete is poured on. Basically there's a shutter and pan. We fill that full of concrete, there's reinforcing bar in there and they then you know there's it, it's it's as I said poured from the outside and the inside. Okay. And is the concrete poured amongst mesh or is it with um, hardener or, or what, what's the makeup of the... 
the upper side. The reinforcing bar the whole way around the rotary that's put in before the concrete board. But I would all I would always encourage customers to put in a a hardener on the on the on the, the concrete and surface hardener of some sort. Yes. With the carry traffic coming on from it. Okay. And is this another emergency switch then here again? Yep, exactly the same. And actually this is probably one of the more important ones if you are working in here. So you can get an emergency switch anywhere on the inside because this, this all moves. So again, if you pull this, this will not start until this is reset. So it stops if someone yeah. is trapped in here. Yeah. It, the, the, you know, on the, so an operator on the outside cannot. Okay. Move it forward. You also notice certain things like you know, Ryan, there's red, the red stamp on this roller as far as quality control. It's all quality control. The, the building, the, the platform. Yeah, great. Standing here on the, I suppose where the services are coming from, the plant room. So your vacuum is coming in here. What else is coming in here? So going out. Vacuum or electricity. Some of our signal wires coming up into the center swivel. Um, you'll see. Well, here what we do is we dig a usually half a metre by metre wide column from the plant room to the pit and then the runs are 6 inch back in the pipe uh, water for just closing out around here and our electricity supply and compressed air through the, through the rotary and so is it fair to say any, are any of these columns here running across structural are they trying to keep they're, they're, so what we have is here we have the, the centre of the rotary and this is, a, this is a grease system so you pump this full of grease but we don't have any centering rotors around the rotary. The rotors, the rotary is centered by the nylon wheels. So you can actually see these these columns are here to turn the center plate. Yeah. But they're not even welded onto it. They don't need to be. Yes. So the gland then is a, a critical thing in any rotary. Could you explain what the gland is doing? So the stainless steel part of here is the vacuum supply in through the center. Then there's another pipe and that runs your services, your electricity, your compressed air on through. So the stainless steel part is the centre gland, the top grey part is your electrical swivel, and then above that end is your nut swivel. So you vacuum coming in and it's going left and right as well, like the wash line is. It's it, it, exactly yeah. the same principle as I yeah. said, you know, we, it's, it's all about vacuum stability. So we came in six inch line and we've dropped down three four inch lines and we'll split them to either side of the, the, the parlour. So that four inch line continues and it goes four inch into the receiver and then straight into the pulsation line and then it goes just down straight into the pulsation line there. So okay. pulsation line has two points of entry for keeping stable vacuum. Okay. And you're, you can purge from this location as well or is it purging from the milk pump? The, all the, the, the milk at the end, the residues purge from the milk pump so okay. they're, they're purged directly from there. Okay. What's going on here, Gary, say here, what? What do we look at here? So again, we have a four inch, we have a four inch line running right around the rotary, a loop line. So the highest point in the line is over at the opposite side of the receiver. We have a 200 litre receiver, stainless steel, um, with twin milk pumps. Um, they're both two horsepower and they're totally independent of each other. So there's two sets of variable speed drives, two floats, two pumps, and two variable speed drives up here. Um, we have automatic drains and then we have air purge facilities. So this is the lowest point where the milk can be. Um, and then we have an air purge at the end of milk and we push the milk from here through the lines right to the bulk tank room uh, in the dairy. Um, you notice as well, large stainless steel sanitary trap. Again, great for washing, but it has an auto function that it'll let any water out of it at the end of, at the, end of washing. So it keeps it clean, but means you don't have to manually do that either. Um, in here after wash or between wash and milk or milk to wash technically you don't have to come down here everything's done automatically yes. through the control system um, for instance for wash you have the compressed air valve again changes this from milk position to wash position so when it's in wash the valve is closed and the lines filled with water and the air injector then comes on at certain times and pushes the water right around the lines and then creates a slug into the receiver and clean up. Um, in milk and then this is a turned open and the milk can flow into the receiver this way then. Great. And all the milk pumps drain automatically then as well at the end of milk in there. Yeah. All, yeah. all at the end, everything's automatic. Yeah, great.